the streets of the old city were in a mess like never before. At Athenagar, people were going in large numbers towards the area where the royal palaces were. Men, women, old people, youths, and children went in droves. Saivas and Vaishnavas, Buddhists and Jains were also present in the gathering. A few Kalamukkas with heavy fasts were also seen here and there in the gathering. Many of the people went away weeping and wailing. Many people went around cursing the reapers. A few youths were seen here and there with guns in their hands. From time to time they went along with the sound of knocking on each other's door. When he heard the sound of the trench being hit, he said, put that on the heads of the peasants. Said some softly, some shouted loudly. The Kalamukkas were prominent among the vociferous. The front facades of important royal palaces in Palyara were crescent-shaped. All the mansions had a spacious front yard. The Nila courtyard was spacious enough to accommodate tens of thousands of people on special occasions. A high wall surrounded the courtyard outside. The wall had three gates. A few palace servants stood guard at each door. A large crowd began to gather near the three gates of Nimurumat. The crowd was increasing by the second. The palace guards let in only the two messengers and the village servants who brought them. They stopped others. But could not hold back for long. Let some voices in, not knowing where they're coming from in the crowd. Get in! Cried. Those behind pushed those ahead. Aren't the waves of the sea pushing each other and finally causing the storm to hit the shore? The same thing happened in this Janasamutra. Those who were in front were bumped by those who came behind and pushed the servants guarding the door and entered. That's it. Even if there was a small break in the Kaveri bank, the flood was getting bigger and bigger and the people were stumbling into Nila courtyard. Within a short time Nila yard was full. Thousands of people have joined there. While talking to Matthew Renthagen, Champion Mathavi heard the commotion that occurred when people broke the security and entered Nila courtyard. He stopped arguing with the sun and came to the front porch on the top floor of the palace. The uproar of the sea of people subsided when they saw the face of Aparamudati, which matched the divinity, and the meek appearance of her standing with folded hands. There was silence for a few seconds. Mother! Where is our prince? Where is Pani's silver? Where is Aroma's Ivarmer, who is the benefactor of their eyes? A few voices rose in the gathering. That's it, in that sea of people, there has been many times more excitement than before. Sembian Mathavi stood dumbfounded. She only knew that something has happened to Pani Selvan, who was stealing the hearts of the people of Padayere. What risk is it? How did it happen? Did the reapers do any perverse thing and cause an immortal damage to the Chola clan and Madhurandha? At this time, Tanjavar messengers came forward, holding the people and pushing them. One of the servants who brought them said, Madam. They have brought important news from Tanjavur. He said. Sembian Mathavi looked at the crowd and laid hands on the messengers, What news have you brought? He asked. Mother. We are the unfortunate ones who have brought the most tragic news. Prince Aromas Hivarmar was coming from Sri Lanka to Kadakare by ship on the order of the Emperor. On the way, the ship was caught in a whirlwind. The accompanying ship was wrecked. The prince jumped into the sea to save the people on board. Then he was not caught. They have arranged to search the sea and the coast. The emperor and Malayaman's daughters are very upset on hearing this news. The emperor has sent a message through us to send them, Madhurandaka Devar, and the younger Prati to Tanjore immediately. Thus the message of the messengers fell into the ears of Sembian Mathavi. At the same time it fell on the ears of the people. Sembian Mathavi's eyes were filled with tears. Seeing that, the people shouted oh more. One of the people in the front of the crowd shouted, Mother! You must not go to Tanjore. Ilay Aprati too must not go to Tanjore. The emperor must be made to come here. It is a lie that Boney's silver has drowned in the sea, it is the hunters who have killed him. Said another. Another voice said, Modern Daka should not go to Tanjore anymore. He should stay here. Where's little brat? We need to see him. 
the voices shouted. Sembian Mathavi saw one of the cities near him and asked him to bring the princess. At the same time all were Kadian, who was standing in the crowd below, moved away from there. He quickly went to the crossroads as before and found the flag house where Kundave was showering Goddess Vanatha with fainting spells. Listening to the last words of Ilay Apiratha to Vandiyathevan, he went and announced about the Amarkala in the palace courtyard. The younger Prati leaves the maids to do the Sadiapasara for Vanathi and leaves in a hurry. As Ilay Aprati approached Sempi and Mathavi on the upper floor of the Kundave Devi palace, she noticed tears welling up in the old lady's eyes. The scene brought tears to Kundave's eyes as well. Seeing this, the society was further plunged into grief. Pawnee's silver did not drown in the sea. The robbers killed him. They must be avenged. The emperor is being held in prison by the evildoers. He must be freed and brought back. We are ready to depart this moment if the princess gives the order. All this the people in the crowd said to the younger Brady. Kundave's mind thought seriously. The fact that the prince is alive should not be revealed now. But the people also have to be pacified. There was a way out. Wiping the tears from her eyes, the princess looked at the front row of the crowd. By then, Alvarkadian and Vandiyathevan were standing there. Seeing all were Kadian, Ilay Aprati signalled for him to come up. Alvarkadian went up like that. She said something to him in a low voice. All Workadian looked at the people and hired them. He said in a loud voice like thunder. Younger Prati can't believe that Pawnee's Selvar is dead. He believes that Samadra Rajan will have saved him as he once carried and saved the prince of Kaveritai. He also says the same when asked about the reason. Younger Prati will make proper arrangements to find the prince. He requests you all to return home in peace. Hearing this, there was a huge sigh of relief from the crowd. Where is the preacher? From his mouth we also hear the good news, said one. Vandiyathevan jumped up and went to the upper floor saying that this is the time. Alvarkadian went and stood near him and said, It is true that the prince has suffered greatly. But his life is not in danger, he will soon be found. He said. How do you know? Said a voice. I am the causer, I know by seeing the planets and the stars, I know by seeing the causes. Lie. You're lying. You're not mean. You're alone. Said the same voice. Vandiyathevan looked at the one who had that voice. He came to know that he was the son of a doctor. Madman. You call me alone? If I am alone, who's alone? He asked. One of the janitors, replied the doctor's son brightly. What did you say? Vandiyadeva roared. The top floor where Vandiyadeva was standing in the Nila yard where the people were standing was twelve feet high. He ignored it and jumped on the doctor's son from the top floor. The war between the two began. Isn't fighting a fun thing for everyone, all the time? People stood in a circle around the place where Vandiyathevan and the doctor's son had fought and started having fun. The people upstairs looked at it anxiously. Most of the crowd started shouting louder than before without knowing what was going on. At this time, from the door, Sanganatham and the sound of horns were heard. Prime Minister Aniruthap Brahmariya is coming, give way. A voice was heard. The Prime Minister automatically got his way in the crowd. 